Um, so welcome to the next episode of the Eye Photography Podcast. Uh, again, if this is a brand new experience for you, um, you're listening to Stephen. I'm one of the Eye Photography uh, tutors. I've completely forgotten what I did then really as well. I help teach, curate photography, but it's not just me. The little giggles in the background are the rest of the Eye Photography team that make it so. So if you can give us a little bit of a low. Firstly, we've got Emily with us. Hello, everybody. And then we've got <laughs> Nick. Hi there. And we've also got Rachel. Hi, everyone. Emily, that was quite an introduction. Was that good? It was. <laughs> that was, yeah. <laughs> it's quite seductive almost. <laughs> <laughs> Getting better on track. So this episode today is all about ways to stay creative. Um, I say in 2021, but it could apply to any year completely, because I think at the start of any year, you know, regardless of where you live, you know, if, obviously if the weather's not brilliant, et cetera, as well, it can always put a bit of a January blues, you know, on your outlook for photography or anything creative that you want to do. But uh, hopefully we're going to be able to try and give you a couple of little challenges, some topics, some ideas, you know, just things that you can kind of maybe kind of percolate in your head and think, you know, I'll try this out. And it's just a way of being able to kind of keep going with your camera and doing something creative to really kind of get you through the moments that are a little bit of a, of a rut in a way. So yeah, I think we've maybe got, you know, 10 or so different challenges or different things that we kind of thought of uh, as about what we can do. And we thought we could talk about them a little bit as to whether we've experienced them ourselves. Um, but yeah, I, I literally want to kind of kick off. Um, this may be kind of pretty self-explanatory, but we call it a 365 project in photography. Anybody know what it is? Anybody done one? I've never done it myself, but uh, I know what it is uh, because I know quite a few people. Are, 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 are some of the um, eye photography members have said it for themselves, haven't they? Because I've seen I've seen images coming through uh, based on, on on this project, which is taking a photograph every day. Some photographers will just do that anyway, automatically, because <laughs> <laughs> they have no choice. <laughs> They're out there taking photographs because it's their job. Um, but I think if you it. It, it's motivation, isn't it? It's basically having something to motivate you. If you don't have to go out and take photographs for any other reason, making yourself do it yourself. So I think, it, yeah, I think it's a really good idea. And I think there's quite a few, um, you know, sort of photographers that I know of. I can't think of any names, but uh, professional photographers who have gone out and done that as well. So it isn't just, some, you know, don't think of it as just a, a studenty thing to do. I mean, people do yeah. do that. <laughs> Emily or Rachel have you have you ever kind of come close to, to attempting to do like a 365 yeah I've, I've I've dabbled with the 365 and I personally had a lot more success with the 52 project so a weekly project hmm. just for me I found myself phoning it in a little bit because it was daily whereas yeah. if I had one specific challenge per week I felt that I could apply myself and some weeks I might end up with three different ideas for that and it would end up more than once a week uh, but just for, for the way that I work I, I prefer to do it uh, weekly but whatever makes you motivated I think is the important thing. Mm. I personally have never done it it's not something um, I think I would stick to I'm just not that sort of person but um I have seen people do it and I think it's a really really good if you're that sort of person it, it will make you be creative it's it can be really good um but I'm just I'm just too lazy that's a <laughs> say you're lazy that's you're out at six o'clock every morning <laughs> taking yeah. photographs of the birds exactly. you are the least lazy person I know and probably take photographs every day anyway <laughs> <laughs> It was a fairly glowing endorsement of our first challenge that no, none of the four of us have ever done it. <laughs> we, right. We've all declared somewhat we're too lazy yeah. to do it as well. We're doing well, we're doing well, guys. We're doing well. But I think that kind of leads us on to our next point, um, that it can still be done. But my, my next point was actually, if you don't do it as 365, as Emily said, do it as a 52-week project. Now, if Emily, if you've done it, I'm sure you've probably got some either structure or some good points that you can kind of give somebody uh, who, who wants to otherwise follow that in a more of a weekly as opposed to a daily challenge. Yeah, I think some weeks will speak to you and some won't. And it's it's pushing yourself to do the ones that don't motivate you that's important because if, if you read the first one and go, oh, I know exactly what I'm doing, you're motivated and you're off, off you go. Um I would, I would say, unless you're following like a specific structure, if there's some that you really are baffled about and don't have a specific idea for, try and, and think of a different concept or, you know, you can take a week out as long as it doesn't snowball. 
Um, but yeah, it's it's finding ideas for the ones that are a little bit more challenging. And one that I did in particular was trying to do different genres of photography. So it might be macro photography or landscape photography or architecture and mixing it up in that way. You can often find sort of different styles of photography that you, you're really interested in that you've never tried before. So yeah, it's really yeah. good fun. Did you make yourself um, a list or did you, you follow somebody else's list to work through? Half and half. I followed one, I sort of copied a, a list, but then added in a few that I liked. Like for instance, if, if I was if I knew I was gonna go uh, abroad on one of the weeks, I'd, I'd put something like seascapes in, so I wouldn't be stuck with that in February in England. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, you, you, can, you can shuffle things around to make it work for yourself, but there's loads out there, including the iPhotography Weekly Challenge, um, where, you know, if you want someone to just give you a brief and, and, and spark that creativity, it's really, really helpful. Oh, thank you very much for the advert. That was a brilliantly timed uh, position because I was also going to mention our iPhotography challenge box that we've got as a completely separate product. Inside of it is a lot of fantastic uh, ideas for kind of uh, getting yourself more creative. And there's also this fantastic little beautiful desktop calendar, which has got 52 different uh, ideas for photography themes per week. So so cool. I, I want one of them, Stephen. I want one of them, Stephen. Where can you get one? <laughs> Where can you get one, did you say? I think if you go to iPhotography.com or if you drop us a message at some point, I'm sure we can give you a link. <laughs> Holding out all the good stuff, aren't they? It's, it's been there for ages, guys. You just holler, I'll get you one. Um, <laughs> brilliant, but there we go. That's a slightly more glowing endorsement of doing a regular photography project. Um, along that line, I don't know, again, if anyone's ever done this before as well. It's not necessarily a set over a period of time, but a like a one subject project. So it, it, you may kind of concentrate it down to a month or whatever as well, but you're just focusing upon one subject. So whether it be, you know, houses, cars, birds, etc., but just literally relentlessly going to take photographs of that one subject over a set period of time. Um, I, I've seen in the past can kind of help build people's skills in a more focused way but this I suppose could also be related to camera settings so I know we've talked before about kind of shooting in like shutter priority but spending maybe a whole weekend shooting just in shutter priority or then just shooting in aperture priority mode as well has anyone ever done that maybe even when you were starting out to just understand you know your camera or a type of subject uh, yeah this is more my kind of thing um particularly with animals um I've said to myself right this day I'm gonna go here and I'm just gonna shoot this spe specific species that's quite hard to oh, say that is a yeah, hard yeah. One. <laughs> <laughs> um because then I think it makes me concentrate on just watching that particular animal whereas if there's other animals around I can very easily get distracted mm. um but it, but I find that it does really help me personally just to concentrate on one thing um, for a longer period of time, like you say, trying out different techniques, different angles, different settings, learning more about the animal's behaviour as well. I find that really helpful just to do one thing at a time. Yeah, I, I was I was going to say that. I don't know if that's maybe a, a benefit specifically within the wildlife genre is that it allows you to understand your subject, maybe um, photographing products, et cetera. It's, it's not so much the case, you know, with it being static, but being a living animal, maybe same with portraits as well, that, you know, if you can spend time watching, is it is that habits and behaviors and traits? Is that what you look yeah. at? Yeah. Yeah. Just the way the animal moves as well, um, where they go so that you know when to time the shot. Animals, a lot of the time are quite creatures of comfort and habit so they will yeah. do the same thing over and over so if you can spend a good few hours watching them then you can kind of get an idea of where they're going to be and how they move um and just get to know their little quirks which is yeah which makes your pictures more interesting i think so yeah, yeah. i think it'll make it a lot more personal if you if you build a routine to to learn their routine, I suppose, then the other two of you kind of work in harmony in a sense, really. But excellent. Oh, that, that's a really kind of uh, it's a very, very valuable point for wildlife uh, photographers, if you're listening. Um, I think and, uh, sorry, Nick. I'm just trying to think, I think I can't remember the name of the photographer, but I'm sure um, there was a, a, a well-known photographer when I was studying years ago who actually photographed repeatedly uh, just ag and just kept on photographing an egg. Um, <laughs> it sounds the most boring thing you could possibly do. 
<laughs> but it was to get to know, you know, how the light fell on the egg in different positions and different yeah. situations. And uh, just, you know, focusing on one really simple uh, object and photographing it in, under different lighting conditions. You could do it in different, in different settings. You could take it, you could take it out with you and, you know, just do everything based around that. And then there's a, a other photographer I know who did a whole um, series based on, around fish tanks. And he'd actually take a, t took a fish tank and took it into different locations and put different things inside the fish tank and used that as a project and called it a, a whole, he did a whole exhibition all based around this fish tank. And he did another the one about teapot uh, called the teapot sonata and it was just he took this teapot around with him with other little objects and made little scenes with a teapot outdoors and it, it, all quite surreal so you, you can make set yourself some kind of project like that that's kind of fun and weird if you like weird kind of stuff as well something you know something that that nobody else has done and I, I, I think it's a really good way of experimenting and playing around and you know just getting involved in something just um and it almost stops being photography in some ways if you see what i mean you, you, you're going beyond that you're going into you know sort of being creative as well so it isn't just about taking photos it's being creative with with the camera and it yeah i, I think it's a really good thing to do did you say it was called the teapot sonata teapot sonata I'm, I'm just trying um, to google at the same time sorry so we can give a name oh really um out, but... it, arthur tress Ah, it did come up. I, just, I thought, yes. Oh, there you I go. I have a very silly photography project that's like that. We have a little uh, stuffed owl called Swoops, and we take him on holiday everywhere with us, and we just put him in front of all these lovely little landscapes, or we put him in, in the jacuzzi oh. with us or whatever. It's not quite as high uh, fine art as, as <laughs> we're talking about, but he's been on a lot of adventures. He has. He has been on a lot of adventures. <laughs> that's really nice because it, it kind of it kind of gives you you know a purpose to always kind of include him in a way you know wherever you go so it, yeah you know whatever whatever you're actually learning out of this kind of practice whether it's camera settings whether it's just giving consistency or it's featuring the same object for a bit of humor a bit of irony um or like lighting like you said with the with the egg and uh, nick as well there's always a benefit to it you know just you don't have to do it for weeks on end etc it could just be over a weekend but it just focuses the mind to learn something specific and then you know keep that information move on do something That'd else be it's the sort of thing that if if you're if you're a kind of quite obsessive person, it can work really well. Because some photo uh, one of my favourite photographers, Cindy Sherman. I mean, she always she just photographs herself all the time, but in all sorts of weird different outfits. And she's created a whole body of work based on photographing herself in different outfits, different situations. Where, with, you know sort of weird sort of prosthetic makeup all this kind of stuff and it, it you know it it does come across as really obsessive and really weird but really interesting at the same time mm, definitely yeah so it's, it's something worth looking at definitely if you're uh if you want to just kind of concentrate your game a little bit more um the next uh one i had written down on our list another way to kind of stay creative is what's called the alphabet game um i'll just explain it because again i don't know if it's something that you know you guys may know about um but it's basically kind of going through the alphabet working a to z and for each letter you're taking a photograph of a different object starting with that letter so maybe an apple a ball a car etc as well but you've got to religiously keep yourself in that order. You can't like jump from Z to P, blah, blah, blah. You've got to kind of keep going in that order and you've got to try and take, take, take the images consecutively. Again, you can spread it out over whatever period of time that you like. Um, but has anyone ever heard of that before? Is this something brand new? New to me, but it does sound fun. I yeah. think you'd have some challenging days. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to sit here and try and see if you can kind of go through A to Z between the four of us and we can name an object that we could photograph. <laughs> could be here for quite a while. Yeah, yeah. I don't know my alphabet, so that might. <laughs> but yeah, I think it, in that instance, um, when I've kind of like thought about the game before, I think it's important to write a list like we've talked about before, like Emily said about the 52 project. Um, so this is effectively kind of half of that already being 26 letters in the alphabet. <laughs> yes. Yeah, just, just no need to double checking there. <laughs> With Rachel saying she wasn't sure about her alphabet. I, I don't know how many letters there are, but the order. Not sure about the order. Not sure about the order. <laughs> 
brilliant <laughs> this is revealing this evening um but yeah writing an object down for each letter so you don't go off on a tangent too much you don't overshoot you don't kind of shoot multiple objects with the same letter you you really do kind of keep it in order and keep it quite um quite tight and um quite simple but it is dead fun because it, it tests your eyes to go looking for objects now and then thinking about how can i make e each object i mean i'm just looking around the room now i see a guitar a light a teddy you know these are all words that you can put into your list but it's thinking now how can i make that teddy look as good as that guitar how can i make these flowers look as interesting as that stool so yeah i think it does challenge the mind as to how you can kind of make a pretty mundane object uh, look a little bit more kind of interesting a bit more stylized so i think that's one to, to check out anyway you wouldn't, you wouldn't necessarily have to do objects either would you because we like do you have the eye photography um the the group the word game where it's just different words so you interpret those words so you could have words as well instead of just objects yeah yeah i was just thinking as soon as you said that about how you can have yeah. people and then people with certain names it's like my word you'd have to have a lot of friends and then to try and find a friend called xavier or zebra or whatever i don't know but <laughs> maybe a bit more challenging <laughs> on that level but yeah if you're a person with a lot of friends then maybe you could give that a try <laughs> but um now this next one i'm very confident emily's going to be able to uh, give us a little bit more details on the back of this but a photo road trip now i appreciate as we're recording this at the start of 2021, the idea of going outside at the minute is like Armageddon. So this may be something <laughs> that in perpetuity you know, can look forward to in the later part of the year or years ahead. But, well, and maybe not just Emily, but has anybody done a photo road trip before? Yes. Go on, tell us. Deets. <laughs> <laughs> um, it, di it didn't really have a particular... Um, you know, it wasn't like the alphabet game where I was trying to get particular things, but just um, when we visit somewhere, I'm very often say, can we just go for a drive and see what we can find? Um, so, yeah, I mean, particularly in England, there's so many beautiful places um, that we've got um, that it, I don't think this is very hard if you've got access to a car. <laughs> um, <laughs> then, yeah, you could have a great time just going out for a drive maybe um near me i've got the peak districts there's the yorkshire dales there's um the lakes and well there's just so much to go at that um mm. i think road trips are, are good good fun and you need some good music as well that always helps uh, well maybe we'll have to put together like an eye photography road trip playlist so can, oh. people can, can download it, <laughs> so we've got the, the right vibe. But um, Emily, <laughs> Nick, have you guys ever gone, you know, do you, could you go out regularly or, you know, have done or even go abroad and, and done it? Specific... I don't have... I don't have a car, so road trip in that sense isn't going to work Bus for me. Trip? And train trip. <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I don't think I know anybody patient enough to actually drive me around. <laughs> That's the other thing. I was thinking, do you do this on your own, or do you drag somebody along with you to drive? Who's going to get really bored because you're taking photographs all the time? <laughs> um, I think this is. It, there's quite often a partner thing going. That it's like you go on holiday somewhere if you've got the one person who's who's into taking photos, like me. Uh, and then you're walking around Berlin or wherever and it's like oh can we just stop here oh I want to take a photo oh. <laughs> you kind of think sometimes you're better off doing that on your own I mean <laughs> <laughs> I suppose the closest I've come was uh, years and years ago when uh, it's actually what first got me into photography really because although I started taking photos when I you know qu quite an early age I only really seriously started doing it when I went to uh, India and Nepal um, backpacking and I decided, right, I'm going to take a decent camera with me and actually, you know, take, take the gear with me that I need a traveling light and uh, document it. And the, I was traveling with a friend and he, he was the same. He, he wanted to take photos as well. He was more into wildlife, he, like bird photography. Uh, whereas I was more into taking pictures of landscape buildings, mm -hmm. people. So, you know, it worked well to get, you know, with the two of us and uh, yeah, because it, it's a weird one. I think sometimes if you if you're on holiday, if you get too obsessed with taking photos, you stop. To, you you don't enjoy the holiday in the same way. Do you know? Yeah. What, does anybody know what I mean? You, you get you, you get, get so engrossed bit, documenting it, yeah. you forget to actually yeah. live it. I'm I'm, and, I'm, yeah. I'm terrible for that. So I do now have times when I think, right, I'm going to 
you know, if I go away somewhere purposely, I think, right, I'm not going to take my camera today because I want to actually enjoy the place and just be yeah. in the moment while I'm there and not do it through the lens. But so it's good to do both, I think. Yeah, yeah I think having the right people or going alone is is very important. Um, I do a lot of photography road trips with my dad who who was one of the main influences to get me into photography and he's a landscape photographer so we we try we know that if we go on holiday together we we won't annoy anybody else because we can take as long as we want taking the photographs and we understand so we, we've done a lot of the UK um we, we went to Naples um we were supposed to go to Amsterdam in 2020 to to see all the the poppy fields in the spring but obviously that didn't transpire um but yeah, it's, having the like-minded people is so, so good. But I think as Nick has said, f- remembering to uh, enjoy yourself as well is vastly, vastly important. One thing I like to do is is dictate my time by the light. So uh, sunrise, sunset, and any astrophotography is camera time. And then the middle of the day when the light's a bit harsh and a bit pants, I'll enjoy the day and put the camera away as much as possible. Yeah, I think, that, I think that's a very good, it kind of, leads on a little bit to what I was going to mention next because I, I think it's important you're right to step away I think that gives you as, uh, just as much kind of opportunity to be kind of creative or um, motivated or inspired in different ways and, and I was going to say about reading um, it's just another way to kind of be creative even as you know photographer or any type of artist but do, do you guys read do you have any kind of particular books you know that you find kind of motivate you inspire you kind of give you a little bit of you know uh juice or je, what i don't know what the french say is that oh, there's a french kind of phrase isn't there oh, i'm not even going to attempt it it's going to be awful um <laughs> je, je ne pas. is it je ne, no oh, I don't even je pas. <laughs> yeah hopefully no one will hear je this, quoi. Know, it, je ne sais quoi. that's it, je, that's je it. Ne pas that's it. that was it i don't know <laughs> Anyway, I know there's some sort of word or phrase that I'm trying to get out there. But yeah, ultimately what I'm trying to say is that, um, so yeah, just stepping away from the camera entirely, um, maybe just having a read, but is is there any kind of books anybody would suggest or or recommend that they found quite motivational or quite helpful? I like reading um, autobiographies. Um, I find them the most motivational for myself. Um, Sometimes they can be a bit heavy, so it depends. Mm what you're reading but um I like ones on conservationists so one that was really good uh was there's a series of this guy who wrote like three let's see if I can find one here um Lawrence Anthony just looking around her room for a book looking for the book there we go um so this is about a, a guy who was a was a basically a conservationist and helped save a zoo uh, in in Baghdad during the war that yeah. that's really interesting and then there he's got a, a series of when he opened up his own um safari place in in South Africa that's really that's good and then um if anyone's heard of um the Sheldrick um elephant orphanage there's a book by Daphne Sheldrick all about how that started and why that started. And I find that kind of thing quite motivational and quite inspirational. So you tend to good. read books <clears throat> kind of related still to that kind of genre within photography, that that wildlife area. Are they kind of, is that kind of a lot of what your bookshelf's filled with? Yes, people who <clears throat> have done things for animals, really. That's where yeah. most of my interest is. Um, plus Nelson Mandela, don't know why. <laughs> Why not? not particularly an animal Why not? person. Why not? <laughs> Wait, quite an inspirational person. <laughs> Still, that's um, well, that's yeah, it. That you know? kind of yeah. Thing. <laughs> yeah. Emily, is there anything in particular you would recommend <clears throat> that you like to read? This is a bit of a weird answer, but I I tend to exclusively read a lot of fiction, and it there's a there's an, an author I love called Tana French who who it's always set in Ireland and I actually got a little bit obsessed with the world of her books that I went and had a photo walk around Dublin and went to all the places <laughs> that were in the book like Trinity College and, and the castle and everything um, and then there was that moment where I was in the Arizona desert on my little road trip and I was like this is like the gunslinger I feel like I'm in a Stephen King novel and <laughs> I just feel like sometimes like the um 
the fiction sort of helps my creative eye in that kind of way because I want to see it and capture it for myself. Oh, that awesome. sounds great. That is a really yeah. nice thing to do. I, 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 I mean, in terms of reading, I read all sorts, you know, I read all sorts, you know, from biography, fiction. Uh, I like, you know, I've always liked science fiction and fantasy as well, which doesn't really have anything to do with my photography. It's just the books that I like reading. But in terms of, uh, I think, things that I can relate to photography i've read don't so much at the moment but I, when i was studying photography I, I read a lot of um poetry because to me it, it kind of worked in some ways in the same way as the way i wanted to be creatively with photography so like with poetry you're kind of putting words together creatively aren't you so it's not writing a story as such you're putting together words to create a sort of overall image in words I guess so uh, for me that I could relate that to photography because the, what I like doing with photography, I, was, I was interested in portraits of people but not just it, it was it, trying to get more sort of into it than that so more sort of symbolic elements into it maybe or uh, you know the so that you it wasn't just a picture of a person or a thing you were trying to communicate more than that by the elements that were in the photo if that makes sense yeah. so it's the mm -hmm. same the way as putting words together to create a, like a feeling maybe or an emotion sort of doing the same thing visually so you're putting things together visually in the same way that you put together words in a poem that's brilliant. It's really nice to yeah. see there's like almost three different you know approaches that you all have uh, I mean I'm not much of a big reader myself it's something I'm, I'm trying to get into more but that's kind of why I've written another point a little bit further down so I, I may just kind of skip my list a little bit just to kind of relate these points to it because as much as I'm not a reader I always say my mind's very very visual in that sense I find movies films uh like my kind of version of, of, of books in a sense that I take you know a lot of the some of the cinema photography from that you know and that tries to inspire sometimes bits of my editing um, but a little bit along the lines of what Emily was saying, I don't know if you've ever seen the um, Sofia Coppola film, uh, Lost in Translation. I think it's like maybe back in 2002, something like that. Yeah, it's a really um, good film. It's beautiful, absolutely beautiful film. And um, so it came out in 2002, about five, six years later, we actually went to Tokyo. Um, and I literally, like Emily had done with Dublin, I made like a list of all the different locations that they filmed in in Tokyo. I was like, I had to go and see them I had to go and like like walk effectively you know those parts of the movie to kind of just absorb it and kind of it, it just gave me a great opportunity to kind of go around with a camera and just photograph those moments that they'd experienced as well so even though it wasn't consciously you know I'm going to try and take some great photographs I just had to be in that moment with it really but it was it was a brilliant way of of, of kind of being motivated and, and just having to have my camera with me at the same time so has anybody else uh, have you have ever done that or have you got any movies that you kind of quite you find kind of quite motivational you like this Stephen go, go I it. have bought many 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 moons ago a map of um like Vancouver where all of the x-files were filmed and uh, <laughs> I, I do want to believe <laughs> and um yeah so it literally says like this one was filmed here this one was filmed here yeah. and I, I would so love to do that and I would bonus points if it's misty and rainy and moody and I can really just pretend that I'm, I'm in the x-files yes I'm sounding a little bit crazy now I'm sorry <laughs> well what, once I tell Emily about the eye photography workshop in Canada she's gonna be over the moon <laughs> I can't wait <laughs> <laughs> we all be on that bus definitely excellent okay. right I've got a couple of other points I'm going to rattle through a little bit quickly as well just so we don't uh take forever on our podcast here um so my other couple of points was one about building a mood board so basically kind of keeping a stockpile uh you know lots of different kind of images or videos whatever they may be but just different types of content that people kind of put together whether it's on Pinterest or not um but does anybody do that do you just kind of scrapbook images every now and again to kind of keep them in your mind I love looking at images, I mean, of all sorts. Like I say, Pinterest really good because it just throws loads of stuff at you when it, you know, when it, uh, and, uh, oh, I don't know. I mean, it's one of the great things uh, about the internet, really, is that you've got so much there to look at. Whereas before it was like, I used to spend a lot of time at the library and I used to spend a lot of time in galleries and it's just looking at stuff, really, isn't it? Uh, wherever you get it from. But now you've, you've got it there, you know, on your laptop or on your phone. Phone. so wherever you are you can you can access 
just an amazing amount of images. And I do, I tend to just, I, I just save stuff. It's all, sa- it's all over the place. I mean, my phone is full of images. That I've just thought, oh, I like that, I'll save that. And yeah. the, the, so you've got them. And then every now and then I'll scroll through things. And it is really, really nice to have all that at your fingertips. Yeah, I found um, I'm not big on social media. I don't really like social media, but, you know, as a business, you have to have it. But I do really, really personally love Instagram. I think if yeah. you follow the right people, yeah. the right, they don't even have to be professionals, just good photographers. Um, you can get so much inspiration. And I love that it told you, well, if they put the location where it is in the world. Yeah. Um, I think I've, I've discovered so many places that I'd love to visit just through Instagram. So I think I think that's a, that's a really good platform for photography. Yeah, I think so. um, for, for my paid work, like if I do styled shoots, it, it often does start on Pinterest. If I have a model in mind or a, an outfit in mind, it, Pinterest or, or even a physical mood board is a great way to sort of brainstorm an idea as a team or individually and, and get sort of themes and looks together. Uh, and as Rachel said, Instagram for travel inspiration. It's just so good to see. Like if I know I'm going to travel somewhere, I'll look on Instagram and see where all the good places are, what people have done, what I might do differently. Uh, it's all just at your fingertips at the moment. So there's 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 definitely so much inspiration out there. Brilliant. Yeah, I, I you're so true. I do exactly what Rachel was saying about if I find someone that has actually got a location tag on it, I have a look where it is on a map and then I save it to my Google Maps. So whenever, you know, looking for somewhere to go out for a road trip or if I'm going to a certain destination, if I've got somewhere saved, it's like, right, I can go there to that place. I know, I basically know what my shot's going to look like or I know what the location's going to look like before I even turn the camera on. I think it's such a, a precious you know, resource in that sense. So yeah, I think kind of research like that and, you know, scrapbooking, et cetera, and saving pictures is so valuable. But um, I, I used to use Tumblr a lot as well. I don't know if people use that anymore. I love Tumblr. It's, it's, yeah. it's Tumblr's going. great. Yeah. It is, isn't it? Yeah, because I do, it, it's still there. And I, I really like Tumblr because I find Tumblr a, a bit more sort of, maybe a bit more left field and a bit kind Definitely. of. Definitely, yeah. Yeah bit bit weirder you see yeah. some stuff on there that you'd never see anywhere else you think where that you know where did that come from <laughs> so it's, yeah it's like the left field version of, of instagram i suppose wasn't it i didn't used to yeah. use it a yeah, while yeah. ago but yeah oh i didn't know it was still going i thought it had yeah. kind of bloody got sidetracked really um it tends to be more arty i think it's a lot more arty the stuff on tumblr isn't yeah. it yeah I, I love it yeah. for um the fan yeah. art you know if, if you're really into a certain yeah. fandom and, and just everyone's creativity is is just amazing <laughs> There's so many amazing, yeah. talented people on Tumblr. Oh, yes, yeah. uh, definitely. Well, with that, our, our last little point that I wanted to hit was uh, something that's probably a little bit more centric to eye photography in general is about having like a little network of kind of creative people around you is, is a lovely way of staying kind of creative in itself. If you've got people obviously like yourselves, but for, for new photographers, you know, if they can find themselves a little home or a little community, if it's online or a camera club even, to be able to go to and actually kind of be able to talk to people about you know camera settings you know inspirations something to kind of try out as well but does anybody outside the wondrous world of eye photography you know obviously they won't be as good of course but let's <laughs> sideline that <laughs> i've got to keep up the brand um you know is anybody part of like a camera club or a photography club online do you, do you find them quite useful i follow pages um more than i don't I think it's a bit different when you work in the industry. Um, I don't really have time to be going to camera clubs and stuff. Um, although I think it would be really nice. I think um, particularly this year or well, last year with COVID, it's really shown how lonely you can be if you work for yourself. Um, so having the eye photography community or, or any kind of community, I think, I think it's so valuable to be able to just talk to people and bounce ideas off people so um yeah I think definitely if if you're feeling a little bit down or a little bit lost with your photography then yeah talk to someone in a a community um and also for people just to um be nice just be nice to people you don't have to you know critique them or you know feel you have to tell them what they're doing wrong just it's just uh, somewhere nice for people to go and feel safe a safe place 
Eye it's photography enough. is cool for that. that that's, really good yeah, for that. Exactly. Well, that's what I was going to slide yeah. into. You know, it's almost as if I've written the point to be able to upsell ourselves in effect. So <laughs> <laughs> why not take the opportunity, Stephen, that if you are looking for a wonderful community such as Rachel is uh, praising the benefits of, check out iPhotography.com. We've got an absolutely dedicated membership platform, uh, which is separate to all our courses, which is absolutely filled with the opportunity to get feedback on your images, just get praise, just be able to talk to people, you know, whether you are just having a bit of a, a bit of a creative rut and you just want to have a bit of a rant whatever it's about then you can join iPhotography plus so you check out learn.iphotography.com forward slash plus so there you go there's a book um, already yeah. so there we go <laughs> so those are our ways to stay creative for 2021 <laughs> and onwards anyway so if you've got any other ideas in mind if you're listening to this and thinking I found this you know and I found this little project quite useful get in touch let us know we'd love to be able to maybe add more to this in the future uh, and with that again you can listen to all the other iPhotography podcasts that we've got available and hopefully we'll have more coming up uh, in the near future you can check out iPhotography on social media on Facebook Instagram and YouTube we've got videos and pictures on there if you need some inspiration or motivation of your own um, yeah I just want to say thank you so much again to Nick Rachel and Emily for joining us on this episode hopefully you've enjoyed listening and hopefully you guys have enjoyed participating because it's been great to hear your views and insights and for me i just want to say goodbye and from the rest of the guys do you want to say yep. goodbye as well bye 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 <laughs> you have to force it out of emily <laughs> she started off so seductive at the start and now at the end she can't even bother saying goodbye so thank you so much for listening everybody and we'll catch you on a few future episodes bye bye